like Romo. I used to keep taking the wrong road. Now watch how I'm breaking these strongholds. Yeah, you made me beautiful. You know that you the go. You came and gave me a song. I was lost. Now I'm found. Then you sent me. I was blind. Now I see 2020. I give thanks for the day that you came into my
Revelation is defined as the act of revealing hidden truths. God communicating divine truths. Unlocking mysteries. And when our eyes are opened, the darkness is flooded with great light. Immediately deliverance has come and freedom has come. This freedom isn't just for you or me, but for our families, our communities, and the generations connected to us. His word, by his spirit, for his kingdom. This isn't just any church. This is Revelation Church. Welcome to Revelation Church. We will now inform you of our Lifeline Essentials. Your attention is key, as this may differ from any church service you've experienced before. If this is your first visit, we welcome and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. If you've already been here before, it's great to see you again, family. How are you staying connected? The information booth is where you can find our Lifeline QR code, so you can officially become a member of Revelation Nation. And to those who are watching online, don't worry. You can scan the code too. We love to have you join us online. Beyond joining us every Sunday and every Prophetic Thursday, it's important to keep growing spiritually. Sign up for Power Shot, a daily devotional on realms of meditation led by Prophet Lovi himself. You could visit us on prophetlovi.com. And it doesn't stop there. We love growing with middle schoolers and high schoolers here at Revelation Youth. On top of that, we meet in person on Fridays and every Tuesday for Global Zoom Prayer. Daughters of Revelation, hosted by Prophetess Maggie, gather together every first Tuesday of the month, and the whole Rev Nation family come together to pray every first Saturday of the month with Apostle Gershon. Zoom link available. The world is changing all around us, and your help enables us to spread the message of Jesus. You can do this by connecting what matters most to you to who matters most to you. When you give your offering in-house, please write legibly using the envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Prefer to give online? The accepted methods will appear on your screen. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and tag us in your pictures and your videos. Many people worldwide have encountered this house and the message of Jesus, all because someone liked, subscribed, and shared something very real happening right here. If you have any questions, just stop by the information booth in the lobby or visit the website at revelationchurchla.org. Thank you for your attention. We know this will be a service where you will encounter God. The time is now. Your time is now. The Lord has something just for you. Wow, what an amazing time to be here in the presence of the Lord in Simi Valley, California at Revelation Church on this good Friday evening. Amen. We are so excited to have you guys both in-house and online. Aren't you excited, Aaron? I'm so excited, Honor. I want you all online to know that we are excited to have you guys and we are so proud of what God is doing and how he is reaching people all over the world. Amen. So we want you guys to write where you're watching from and be super excited in that chat. And we have so many exciting things happening here at Revelation Church. So many. We're so excited to tell you what those things are. So Revelation Youth is having service and we are so excited as we welcome back our very own Prophetess Lena and she will be teaching April 5th at 6.30 p.m., amen? The youth service is an opportunity for your middle and high school kids to come be encouraged, inspired, and excited for what God has for them as future leaders of Revelation Nation, amen? Amen. That is so amazing that she is back. And it is also amazing that we have a dance ministry, amen. and we have a guest to tell us all about it. Amen. Hey, hey, what's going on, Revelation Nation? So look, April 7th, this is the time for dancers. So we have an orientation coming April 7th. This is required to be a part of the dance ministry to even be signed up for the audition. It's 18 plus. 
Be there after service April 7th. If you want to sign up, revelationchurchla.org. It's, it's, it's going to go up. It's, it's exciting. It really exciting. is exciting. Yeah. And I want us to know, what can they expect when they come to the dance ministry? So the orientation will give them all the information about okay. what our plans are for the year, for the ministry, performances that we have, videos that we're going to make. So make sure you're there April 7th. It is required. So I don't want you to not come and then come to the audition and get turned away. So make sure you're there. But um, just get ready to use your body to glorify God. It's going to be amazing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a, a, hand, a, a round of applause for our brother, Dana. Yes. I'm so excited for that. So I am excited. so excited for that as well. Yep. Now, solo, the singles ministry. We are hoping we are hosting our first panel on April 19th at 7 p.m. Amen. Where they will engage in deep discussions and share personal journeys and insights. This event is open to adults aged 18 and up. And you can attend either in person or online where you will receive a private link. And you can visit us at revelationchurchla.org to register. You do not want to miss it. Yes, it is super exciting. And I got want you guys to check out this video that we have for you guys. such a, a powerful video i, I love I, I love that sequence amen sure now can. manage my wealth is tomorrow tomorrow okay amen at 1 p.m you will want to be in the house to learn from these power po power packed wealth managers it will be hosted by doctors lolita and van uh bishop van brown and we will have a special guest dr lovi elias himself the grace for wealth multiplication is evident in all of their lives so you will want to tap in tomorrow at 1 p.m and you can visit actually all of the registration spots are closed so we'll see you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m yes i'm so excited for that because i know that I need help managing my wealth. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. And we also want you guys to get excited for our kids. We are excited for the upcoming Easter service and all the amazing children of fire who will be coming to our children's church service for the first time. If it's your first time and you want to shorten your check-in time, visit revelationchurchla.org slash kids and complete the registration form. Don't forget to click the Add Child button on the form for each child that you are registering. And we also want to let you guys know that pre-registration does not guarantee you a spot. So the pre-registration is just for you guys to position yourself to have a better chance of getting that spot. So make sure you guys pre-register. Yes. Now. March 31st, we have our very own Easter service where we get to celebrate the resurrection of our very own Lord Jesus. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise. We should be excited for that. We should be excited for that. We're inviting all of you, you and your families, your friends, whoever you want to invite. It's going to be a powerful gathering as we celebrate the resurrection victory of our very own Lord Jesus and Revelation Nation. All of you guys, including online, all of you are invited. So make sure you plan to bring your families, your friends, your neighbors. And there is no special wardrobe needed. Just come so we can celebrate the king together. And 
We also want to let you know that you cannot form a line, okay? You cannot form a line before 7 a.m. The moment 7 a.m. hits, you guys can get in line, and then we will uh, happily get you guys seated in the sanctuary and in the tents. We have so many spaces available. So, again, please do not line up uh, before 7 a.m. Yes, that is such an important note to know because we also don't know where the line might start from. We do have a new building, so it can start from anywhere. So please honor our city and do not show up before 7 a.m. to form a line. Amen. Amen. And today is Good Friday, <laughs> and we are doing baptisms. Are you guys excited? Yeah. 200 plus, 200, 200 plus people. Plus. You guys look so beautiful and you're all white like angels, amen. So we want you guys to watch this video, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, give him glory, give him praise in the house tonight. Now remember, I didn't tell you to do it for yourself. I told you to do it for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give the King of glory praise, hallelujah. Oh, we're excited. We're excited tonight. We're excited for what God is doing in this place. We are hosting so many people, especially for baptism. And we thank God. But I want you to lift your voice. As we get ready to baptize the people of God. I want you to lift your voice. And what you are believing God for. What you, what your expectation is. That you lift it before the throne of grace. Lift your voice and pray tonight. Madele bradoshta. Mela manama koste parababaya. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. For such an opportunity as this, O oh Lord. Milebra nosta na makata, rana mazobri intele mana mazopada baba. Where the children of God are coming to be baptized, in Your name, in Your name, in Your name, and so we lift them before the throne of grace. Oh, I can hear you praying. I can hear you praying. Lift the church of God before the throne of grace. Lift the people. Before the throne of grace, lift every home, lift every family. The word of God says help comes from him. Help comes from him. So we lift the children of God before the throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, that your help is appropriate help and is timely help. Thank you, Lord, that every person that walks into this place today, 
will receive a visitation, will receive an encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because there is liberty in your presence. There is liberty in your presence. So we lift every home before the throne of grace. May the name of the Lord be glorified. May the name of the Lord be exalted. Libra namazunda bakata. Libra namazunda limini mekista. Ramana makundi libra namajata bababa. Now I want you to lift yourself before the throne of grace. I want you to pray, Lord, let your visitation be my portion. Let me be located tonight. Let me be located tonight. Let everything that I am struggling with, Lord, let it fall off in the mighty name of Jesus. Moja Libra can I share a secret with you this evening? The word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying concerning your life tonight? What are you saying concerning your home tonight? Oh, I'm looking for people who want to lift their voice and say, Lord, let it be so according to your word. Let me be a recipient of your glory. Let me be a recipient of your power. Let me be a recipient of your healing. Let my body respond to divine intervention from the crown of my head unto the soles of my feet. Let your word be yea and amen. Mazebra nosta patala baba, rama kandele bade babere mazanda baba ya, raba da raba zonda la babere makata, lebra da ba zonda baba raba baba baba ya, mekata taba raba bana mazanda babe, raba da ba roste pala makanda la baba baba ya, ila da raba zebra na mazanda baba ya babe, lebra na mazanda makata taba baba baba ya. Thank you, Lord. For all that are joining us from all over the world, we lift them before the throne of grace. May they experience you like never before. I want you to begin to lift your voice and thank the King of glory. Lift your voice and thank the King of glory. Lift your voice and give him praise. <laughs> We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We give you all the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a shout in this room. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a shout in this room. Come on, you came to worship and raise a sound in this room tonight. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's do a praise check. Y'all a little quiet in here. Come on, you came to worship. Can y'all make some noise? I said, if you really came to worship, can y'all make some noise in here tonight? We're going to warm y'all up in a minute. I don't know what this is, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna worship through it, all right? Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name and we give you glory. You're an amazing God. And because of that, we just want to say thank you. Father, we adore you. It's your name that we live high. Come on, come on, somebody, put a sound, put a sound in the atmosphere. Come on. We give you glory. Get going. 
of praise. When you reflect on his goodness, we shouldn't have to pump and prime you. All you gotta do is think about his awesomeness and it ought to loosen something up on the inside of you, all right? Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Do me a favor, put them hands together like this. Yeah.
Forever 
never stop. Your grace doesn't run out. Your grace doesn't run out. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. Oh yeah, yeah. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. your sacrifice we acknowledge your love we acknowledge you God we worship you God
You have been so, so good with every breath. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna glorify you. I'm gonna testify, sing all my love. You've been good all my life. All my life, you have been so, so, so good. With every breath, with every breath, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll sing. My life will tell the story of your faithfulness. My life will tell the story of your goodness. My life will testify of your power. You've been faithful, you've been good all my life. You've been good, you've been good with every breath. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness. I'm gonna say of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm gonna say of the goodness of God. Of your mercy, of your mercy. I'm gonna say of the goodness I'm gonna testify. I will remember. I will say. eyes to see you tonight in a new way, in a new way, in a new way, in a new way. You are our rock, Lord. You are our rock, Lord. You are our anchor, Jesus. You are our anchor. foundation. You are a firm foundation. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. You are the only key. The only key. The only key. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad And I put my faith in Jesus Oh, he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So I
It's impossible for you to fail, Lord. It's impossible for you to fail, Lord. He won't, yeah, he won't fail. He won't, he won't. He won't. He won't. He won't. I know, I know, I know. And you've got me in the palm of your hand. My life's in the palm of your hand. My life's in the palm of your hand. Yeah, he's got the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. Mm -hmm. Mighty God, come on, sing rain came. built on you and I say i
All over the room. Can we sing that one more time? He won't. Everybody, one voice. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Last time, he won't. He won't. Now, if you believe that you serve a God who will never fail you, he will never let you down. When other people forsake you, he still has got your back. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'm going to be here when nobody else is here. If you're grateful for that kind of God, won't you raise a sound of gratitude out of this place right now? 
Y'all been comfortable all night long. I said, if you're grateful to have that kind of God on your side, raise a sound of gratitude out of this room. y'all believe that God is able to do the exceedingly and he's able to do the abundantly of all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh on the inside of us. Tap the person next to you and say he's able. He's able. Come on I need you to tap somebody who might be going through a little situation and say I don't care what you faced before you got here. You serve a God who's able. Tap him, tap him, tap him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take a moment, just think about his goodness. Hallelujah. Father, you've rescued us from things seen and unseen. I've seen you do so many miracles, God. Come on, somebody raise a sound in this room. Exceedingly Abundantly Above all Thank you All you can ask or think According to The power That worketh in you
he's able. I feel like I'm about to have some church in here.
Last time I checked, there's a whole bunch of people here that's about to get baptized. Is that right? Hallelujah. I remember when I got baptized, D. I thought I was getting in the water and nothing would change. I thought things would just be the same. Tell us what happened. D. Not only before I got in the water, but when I seen other people getting in the water, that's what I seen. I seen people getting up, speaking in tongues. I seen people getting up, delivered. I seen people that was depressed, living with peace. I seen people that didn't have faith, have greater faith. I seen God turning around for a lot of people. And that's gonna be some of you right now. You're not leaving the same way you came in. Your life is turning around. It's turning around for you. He's able. 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 Come on, that's you. That's on the inside of you. Yes, yes. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. You move mountains. You cause war. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. You alone is God, and we thank you for this is the day you made, you ordained from the beginning. From the day of our father Adam, you ordained this day, O oh Father, that we, we, we surely commemorate the great sacrifice that was given on our behalf. Father, this night marked a new beginning for all your people. Father, may we partake of the same grace as we are in your presence. Merciful Lord, cleanse us and purify us by your spirit, by reason of your blood, that, Lord, we may stand upright before you. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy. In the name of your only Son, your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord Jesus. Amen. I think you can clap your hands for the Lord Jesus better. Hallelujah. 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 Wave your hands if you believe the Lord Jesus. Glory be to his holy name. Tonight is a special night. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only because it is a night that marks a very special work in God for us. But it's also a special night because many will step into the greatest path you can ever take in the presence of God. Amen. You know, I believe the scriptures and I believe that everyone should not take a risk. Look at your neighbor say, don't take unnecessary risks. Don't take unnecessary risks. If there are results to be found, then it's not really a risk. It's a definite thing that you should do. The Lord Jesus said, when they believe and baptize, and they are baptized, they will be saved. Amen. Don't ignore what Jesus found to be serious. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you get an opportunity of getting baptized, please do it with everything that you can. Amen. Whatever the Lord commands, we ought to do. Amen. If it was not important, if he was not serious, he would not tell us to do it. But because it's of great value to him, and it marks salvation, it, it is so positioned to the point that it's like if you don't have it, your salvation may be now. Yeah, no one can argue that. Jesus said it. So, it, it's very important to take baptism serious. If you have never been baptized, if you're in your local church or you are in another country, please find a way to be baptized. It's important. I don't know all the technicalities, but one thing that I know is that this is something that ought to be done. And the Lord Jesus will be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have about 200. Can we turn off the air, please? This is... Amen. Um, we have at least, I think, a little over 200 people that will be baptized tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is all to the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus. So I will not preach for a long time because there's uh, such a great work to be done. So if you can grab your Bibles and go to... Mark chapter 14, from verse number 43 to 50. She's feeling it. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mark 14, from 43 to 50. Can we all read it together? Yes. One, two, three. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. 
and, and he that betrayed him had, had given, given them a token, token saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by a drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the prophetic word. Let the prophetic word. That is declared over my life by you. That is declared over my life by you. Be fulfilled in my life. Be fulfilled in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated in heavenly places. Now, I won't teach for too long, but I want you to understand that there are certain things in life that must come to pass. There are certain things in life you're going through. It is in order. In fact, all things that you are going through is in order for a prophetic word to be fulfilled. Let me say it uh, clear and better for somebody to hear. The battles you see in your life they are a response to something that was spoken in the realm of the spirit that is contingent on how you're going to respond. Amen. There are certain things that are definite in life. Birth, betrayal, and death. These three things are definite in everybody's life. Not everyone will get married. So it's not a definite. Not everyone will have all springs. It's not a definite. But these three things will happen to everyone. You will be born. You will be betrayed. And death will come. Betrayal is one of the most painful things that can ever happen to anybody. Because when you are betrayed, you're never betrayed because you are a bad person. You are actually betrayed because you are a good person. <laughs> I'm trying to bring you somewhere. The reason why betrayal hurts is because you know that you are with these people daily every single day and what is happening to you should have never happened because of how good you are betrayal always comes from affection mm, i'm gonna say that one more time betrayal usually is born from a place of affection Remember, it was the act of affection that marked Jesus that he should be betrayed. The Lord Jesus was so powerful. But at the same time, he was so down. That the Pharisees could not distinguish who he was among his disciples. So the only way he could be pointed out that will not create any kind of drama was that the betrayer had to betray him with a sign of affection. Come on. Come on. Good. Good. Judas came to the Lord Jesus and smooched him on the side. Mwah, mwah. My Lord, my Lord. And Jesus said, Judas, you betrayed the son of man with a kiss. Haters will not betray you because they already hate you. Good. Good. Okay, I'm talking Good. to the wrong people. Teaching. 
When haters come after you, it will not affect you because there is no affection tied to them. A hater cannot kill you because they are speaking from outside. They are talking about matters that they are not involved in. They don't know you're coming in and you're going out. They don't know your life. So everything they speak is an opinion just like anyone else can have. You have to understand that I come from a culture where it's very Middle Eastern influenced. And if you know how people used to eat, we ate with big plates on the floor. And the way you ate was that you literally were laying on one another around what you're going to eat. Now you need to ask yourself, the level of betrayal that was projected to the Lord Jesus, that he was eating with men that were not sitting apart from him, but were really close to him. The Bible says John the beloved literally was laying on Jesus like this. They were leaning on each other. They did not even sit apart. And that is where betrayal was born from. When you are betrayed, when you are betrayed, not if, Because there is no promotion without betrayal. Uh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. Understand this. Everyone picks their own Judas. <laughs> because Judas is very important for your calling. Judas is extremely important for your destiny. Judas is tied into the purpose of God that is in your life. So it doesn't matter how well you choose your friends. One of them must be used for betrayal. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I'm preaching to somebody today. Those things that felt like your heart was going to be ripped from your chest did not come from outside people. It came from people who you said, my best friend, my closest friend, my sister, my brother, my, my close, my blood. It is where betrayal comes from. It does not come from outside. It comes from within. Your own flesh and bone will betray you. When silver is involved, gold is involved. Hey. I have seen holy Christians with tongues change into devils. Within seconds. You're like, but sister, brother, I used to see you shanda. I didn't know you were like this. <laughs> but you have to understand that betrayal is not only necessary for your growth. But it propels you to the other side of life that God has ordained for you. Amen. Amen. You have to remember that the life of a believer begins after the grave, not before it. You didn't hear that. The life of a believer begins after the grave, not before it. Everything in your life is preparing you for one thing that is definite is death. The problem is the Lord is advising us to die to self. But many of you, you are looking for people to kill you. Yet you are supposed to kill yourself before they kill you. Amen. If they kill you, they kill you on their terms. But if you choose to carry your cross... Yes. You die on your terms. Amen. Uh, somebody didn't open their ears to hear that. You are supposed to die to self. Don't wait for Judas to sell you. 
Work out your own salvation so that the prophetic word over your life may be fulfilled. But I guarantee you the word of God will not be fulfilled in your life on this side of life. You have to cross over to the other side. This is why baptism is very important because it marks a transition from one side of life to a spiritual life. You have to understand that many of us as children of God, our life is still rooted within the flesh, but our life has not entered into the spirit. The Bible says, walk in the spirit. And the word to walk means remain. It is a consistent motion. You don't just enter the spiritual world, you walk in the spirit. Meaning it is a continual act. It is a continual progression. It is not a seasonal thing. It is not a one-time thing. It is not a feeling thing. It is an everyday, every minute, every hour, every second thing. That is the only way the lusts of the flesh cannot touch you. The flesh does not need the grave to die. I'll say that one more time. The flesh does not need the grave to die. The body needs the grave to die, but not the flesh. Now somebody will say, what is the difference between the flesh and the body? You have to understand what God hates is not your body. It is the fleshly nature. When you are going to die to self, what dies is not your body because God needs your body. What God wants to kill is the flesh. And if the flesh is not killed by you, when you are betrayed... The pains of the flesh will kill your body. So good. The pains of the flesh will kill your body. Many of you are weak because somebody betrayed you because the pains of the flesh kept you in a place of how could they do that? I served so well. I did so good for them. Look at how they are trying to destroy my career. They want to destroy my license. They want to destroy this. They want... What did I do to them? If you remain in that place, the goal of the devil is to use the flesh to kill your body. But Jesus came out of the grave because there was no flesh to kill. Amen. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. There was no flesh to kill. So he could rebuild the body. Because there was no flesh to kill. When the flesh is killed, the flesh seeks to gratify itself. I will show them. They will see what I'm going to do. Or they think they got me or oh, I'm, I'm going to show them. When you have the flesh, you seek to prove yourself. But when you are born of the spirit, you simply manifest God. Amen. What you do has nothing to do with the people who are in the flesh. Amen. It has everything to do with the spirit of the living God. Amen. You are carried by the spirit of God. You are influenced by the spirit of God. Your speech is of the spirit. You seek to fulfill the mandate of the spirit that the Lord God has placed on your life. When the Lord Jesus had gone to visit a certain elder, as he was in his home, a damsel ran into the house. And she just went straight to his feet and began to cry, washing his feet with her tears, taking the most expensive oil that she had and started anointing the Lord Jesus. Now the question is, how can somebody who has no power to give life anoint the one that has life? Yes. 
I want you to think about that for a second because it is actually contrary to how spiritual things are perceived by those who are in the flesh. She cried at his feet, took oil and was anointing him, took the most expensive perfume, put on. She was doing all these things and Jesus is not stopping. Jesus is just watching her. And the owner of the house looked and began to say in his heart, ah, this guy can't be really a prophet. If he was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is that is touching him. He would be able to tell, uh, why are you letting her touch you? She will defile you. But the Lord Jesus said something very interesting. He said, I came into your house. You did not greet me with a kiss, but this woman has been kissing my feet the whole time. When I came into your house, you did not wash my hands or my feet. She has been washing my feet with her tears and wiping them with her own hair. I came into your house, you did not anoint me with oil. But ever since I came in, this woman took the most precious oil she has and she has been anointing me. You don't understand what she's doing. She's preparing me for the grave. She is preparing me for the grave. The failures you have gone through, they are preparation for something. Amen. They are not a preparation for death. They are preparation for the grave. Why are they a preparation for the grave? Why are they a preparation for the grave? I want to tell you, one of the anointings that we don't talk about in the church is the anointing for the grave. We talk about every anointing, the breaker anointing that will break and open doors, the anointing to do this, the anointing to do that. But nobody wants to talk about the anointing of the grave, which is the most important, the reason why you're here. When you are anointed for the grave, the grave can't hold you. Amen, amen, amen. I'll say that one more time. When you are anointed for the grave, the grave can't hold you. The fact that the grave will think that it can take you, it is also the demise of death in your life. The reason why God permits you to go through the valley of the shadow of death, to encounter the lowest part so that it seems that you are going to be left for death or left for dead, is the fact that when death puts his hands on you, it is death that will die. Amen. Amen. For you have been anointed to deal with death. Yes. I'm going to say that one more time. You have been anointed yes. to break out of death. Amen. Death may have killed your father, your mother, but I'm here to tell you, death has no power to kill you. Amen. Death has no power to kill your business. Amen. Death has no power to kill your career. Amen. Death has no power to destroy your relationship. Amen. You have been anointed to contend yeah. and to prevail over death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been anointed for it. There are people who can't face death. But you will face death. Because you are anointed for death. Amen. Every giant you will ever face in your life is a preparation for the main giant you're supposed to fight. Mm. <laughs> Bishop, I think I'm talking to myself. The spirit called death, you must meet him. There is no escaping it. Jesus said, I already beat him. Don't worry, you will beat him too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> For he took the keys of death, yes. hell, and the grave. Yes. 
So when you meet death, you have the power to bind him. Amen. You have the power to arrest him. Amen. That it will be impossible. Listen, it will be impossible for death to hold you. Now, the angel of the Lord just spoke to me as I was speaking, Bishop. And this is what he said to me just now. He said, the Lord allows you to go into the grave for the family that are bound in the grave. My God. My God. So good. My God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you didn't hear me. If you knew it, you'd be clapping your hands. Because you understand there is an assignment. Yes. There is a special assignment. There is a special assignment. The Bible says on the last day when the trumpet will sound, death, hell, and the grave will give up its dead. He said he will give them up. Meaning it has arrested some people. Yet when Jesus rose up, he got out of hell. With the keys of what? Hell, death, and the grave. He took the keys. Yes. Satan does not even have keys to his own house. Amen. You are the one who has the keys to his house. Hallelujah. You can grab a demon and walk him to hell. Yes. And say, come here. Throw him in and... Yes. Touch your neighbor. Say, you have been anointed for the grave. You have been anointed for the grave. You have been anointed for death. You have been anointed for death. Hallelujah. 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 Ah. But, but you need to understand this. The anointing comes to soothe. Mm. The anointing is a result of pain. The anointing is not born of pain, but it comes because of pain. Because when God puts his oil on you, it is to soothe the wounds and to cause rapid healing to what has bruised you, bruised your family. Now understand this. The anointing will suit the wounds and it will heal the wounds, but it will not take away the scars. Uh, I feel like I'm preaching to myself. It has the power to heal the wounds, but it does not take away the scars. Because if the scars are lost, then you cannot track where death is. Come on. Hey, Amen. You're teaching so great. You're teaching properly. The scars are footprints of where the demons are hiding. I feel maybe this is for those who are online. The scars are simply a roadmap to where death is keeping some captives. That when you begin to analyze the depth of how many people the grave has taken from you. What do I mean has taken from you? You begin to observe. You see, mm, my mother always wanted to do this. She never got there. She's a walking zombie. A human without a purpose because nothing was ever fulfilled. You have to understand before the body dies, the spirit is the first one to be attacked. Ah, my father was extremely hardworking. He did everything right. He did everything the way it should be done. But my guy never went anywhere. But when I talk to him and I hear the ambitions and the things that he wanted to do, none of them, I seem to be the only one that is trying to kick out of this. Notice, you are realizing that there is a casket you need to break out of. Yes. Amen. But everyone seems to be at peace. Yeah. 
bring lockdown. The reason why you are not comfortable is you are anointed Amen. to break out of death. Amen. You are anointed to break the casket, the coffin. This is why where others are comfortable, you are very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm talking to people who are ready to walk out of that difficult situation that has killed people, that has destroyed people. It has crushed dreams and hopes for others. But you realize you're like, hmm. Why is everyone okay with this? Oh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Why is everyone okay with this? Why is everyone okay with this? Why is everyone content with this? Because you have to understand, because death is something that everybody will observe. But many think of death of just being an act of you buried somebody. But there are many that are living, but they are dead. I call them the living dead. The living dead, so many. Ask yourself this question. How is 99% of the wealth controlled by 1%? What are all the other 99 living by? They are living by a percentage that the 1% are giving to them. No, this is a fact of life. 1% of the population controls 99% of the wealth. 99% of the population lives off the 1% of what is left. And it is not really left. It is the 1% paying you to work for them. It is what they have decided for you to have. You are breaking out of it. Amen. Now your clapping is too small. Let me find people I can talk to about this. You are breaking out of it. You see, the day you stand before God, let me just tell you this because this is important for you to know. When the Lord went to his servants, one he gave five talents, another he gave two, another one he gave one. And the Bible says he gave them according to their several abilities. He gave them according to their capabilities. God did not give them according to who he loves. He gave them according to their abilities. And God did not expect them to operate outside of their abilities. God did not have them, uh, did not have the expectation for them to double or to triple what he did not give them. The one who failed to multiply, everyone else, they entered into the same rest that the Lord gave. The one who had five and gained five more, the Lord said, you have been faithful with little, now I will make you ruler of much. Enter into your Lord's rest. The one who had two and multiplied them, he came to him and said, you have been faithful with little, Now I will make you ruler of much. Enter into your Lord's rest. Notice, all of them are entering into the same rest because God does not judge you based on how you live. He judges you based on what he gave you to do. Mm, Uh, 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 (laughs) No, you didn't hear what I'm saying. We teach people to walk against sin, which is important. But actually hell is destined for those who didn't do their purpose. Let me, let me, let me leave. It's in your Bible. 
The one with the one talent was not a bad servant. He was just a servant that didn't work with what he was given to work with. We tell everybody, oh, don't sin. Don't. It is very good. Nothing wrong with that. But actually, hell is for use, are useless things. Jesus said, you are the, I am the vine and you are the branches. He said, every branch that does not produce fruit, what does he do? He cuts it. And it is thrown in the fire. So what do you think Satan's mission will be against you? Do you think it's to make you sin or to make you of no effect not to produce what you are created to do? Amen. Boy, so good. Listen. Satan is going to the pits, into the lake of fire. Notice what the Bible says in Ezekiel. It said, iniquity was found in you. And then you sinned. There is a big difference between iniquity and sin. Iniquity is what births sin. Sin is a symptom that shows that there is iniquity. This is why repentance means also to get rid of iniquity. To turn even you are thinking from where you came from. Because if I act on sin, I may say, Father, forgive me my sin. God will forgive your sin, but there is still iniquity in you. It means tomorrow you will do it again. Uh, I don't know if you are hearing me. If you, hear, if you read Psalms 103 and many other passages, it talks about God forgiving your iniquity and also forgiving your sin. Iniquity and sin are two different things. Am I right, Bishop? It's very true. So iniquity is the seed of death. Sin is the symptom that shows that iniquity is in you. It is the fruit of, sin, of, of iniquity. So we are cutting off fruits, but we are not uprooting the roots. Come on. Amen. 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 Jesus said, you will never find a tree producing fruits of a different kind. Because every tree produces after its kind. So you cannot be a pear tree producing apples. Something is off. God will cut those branches off and throw it in the fire. Satan's greatest mission is not to make you a sinner. Satan's greatest mission is to paralyze you to die while you're still living. And you think you're doing things for God, yet you're not. While you're living, you may live to be 99.99 years old. But you have never done anything for God, yet you have been feeding people. You've been doing things for the homeless. You've been doing this in church. Maybe God just wanted you to... To, to just be somebody that prays for the needy. You see, there is this thing that we have been deceived in church where you graduate from your responsibilities. In my church, I began as an evangelist, but after five years of faithfulness, I've now been anointed a, a, an, an apostle. And after being an apostle for six good years, my pastor decided, no, you are now a prophet. <laughs> and after that now, after, after this conclusion, we have realized that you are not just a bishop. You are an archbishop. And we need to give you another title you need to be. Emeritus. A retired professor. 
Notice we, are, we love this graduation of one thing to another thing. Yet you are only born to do one thing. Come on. Come on, so good. I'm talking to the wrong people. Maybe I'm talking to the guys online. You are anointed from one purpose. Amen. Not for 10 million purposes. While you are in your purpose, you can have side quests. But your main thing does not change because it is your main thing that keeps the boat flowing. Yes. Haven't you ever asked yourself this question? If I can go to Houston and have a, a congregation of 7,500 people, and it was because the venue was small, that's why we only had 7,500. I went to London, gathered 5,000. I went, I went to Miami, gathered these numbers. I went to Africa, gathered over 45,000 people. That's the only people they could count because they couldn't, pe they couldn't count the other people. It was done. Don't you think I could just start planting branches everywhere? Yeah. It would be easy to say, oh, we have a, I, I have, you see, pastors use it as a flex. Uh, my name is Bishop. Lovi Elias, I have over 500 branches all around the world. You even change it is no longer Revelation Church, it becomes Revelation Global. <laughs> we are we are we are global international church with over 575 branches all around the world. I'm a big, big, big man. Notice. I could have easily done that. Do you know how many people have approached me? Papa, I just want to be your son and, and open a church. It happens. I have emails that are never ending. Ben's has the, is the one that has to deal with these things. Uh, Father, I, 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 you too. Me too. I, 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 would, I would be a faithful son. I just need to open this branch and I promise you. Me, I don't do those things because if I'm ever to do that, number one, it will be from the direction of God. Number two, you will carry the spirit I carry or else you create your own vision and you divert from what God gave me to do. Oh. Then instead of you building, you'll be working against what I have been anointed to do. Oh. So it becomes a conflict instead of something that is actually progressive. Elisha did not start a new ministry. He continued something. He continued. So he didn't start afresh. He continued what was already there. You see, the need to, to do our own thing has interfered with the purpose that God has given us. That instead of doing what God has given us to do, we are now planting our own seeds and producing our own trees to have our own fruits. Come on. And when death comes, you say the devil took everything from me. Do you realize the devil cannot take what God gave? Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time. If you lost something... Tragically, and you have never recovered it. I tell you the truth. It didn't come from him. Because the nature of God, because God carries no death. If he gives Mama Ghana something, and he takes from Mama Ghana, he won't give the same thing. That is slowing you down. Because if you are going to give me the same thing, why did you take it from me? Mm. Mm. But if the Lord gives her this and takes it from her, he will not multiply what he gave. He will give something better than what he gave Come on. and then add what you lost. Come on. That is the dimension you are entering into after tonight. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Death 
is asleep. It's called the sleep of death. Because death will make those who have been asleep feel like they just fell asleep five minutes, two minutes. You know how you go to sleep and you wake up, Ugh. oh, it's morning already. Yet you've been sleeping eight hours, nine hours in, in one position. <laughs> Turning to another position, slumbering on the bed. But you're, oh, morning is here already. Oh my gosh. <sighs> now I have to wake up. Oh. You have all these emotions and feelings because it just seems like it was so quick. That's how death seems like. When death creeps over you, you say, oh, I'm going to do something tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, you don't do it. I'm going to do something tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, you don't do it. I'm going to do something tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, you don't do it. By the time you wake up from that sleep, you realize that you will no longer have the ability to do what you are supposed to do. Mm. You're teaching it. Teaching good. I, I just, you know, ah, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I would do it. Hey, let me tell you, I realized that there are some years of my life that just went like this. And I'm like, hey. Hey, <laughs> that's why I don't like wasting time. I grind and do everything that God has given me to do with every bit of energy I can master. Look at this. After tonight, I'm going to baptize like 215, 220 people with the help of Bishop Donko and Apostle Gershon. But at 6 a.m., by 5.36, I will already be up, ready to come and do fasting prayer with you. Amen. 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 Because sleep is for the dead. Rest is for the living. Amen. Those who are alive rest to regain energy. But those who are already dead sleep. Sleep is a luxury given to the dead. Rest is for the living. Yes. You are anointed to break the casket that has been holding people in your family. Amen. 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 You have gone to difficult situation to different depths because there are some that you need to rescue from that place. Yes. When the Lord Jesus descended into hell, I don't know. I've, I saw some pastors teaching that Jesus suffered in hell. I was like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> After he paid, paid the full price in hell, I'm like, are you out of your mind? It was a contradiction for hell to receive an innocent person. So hell imploded. It folded within itself. Because God set up death, you have to remember, death was ordained for justice. Hell was justice to those who depart from God. The Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. But stubborn human beings go there because they are stubborn. So hell has power over those who have diverted from God. So God tricks his own system by, by, by killing somebody that is innocent. He broke the system because the system was never created, nor did it have a, a, a statue of limitation that explicitly, expli explicitly said that the one who committed the sin is the one that is going to die. But in the mind of God, he made it whereby one human being can be a representative of every human being. So in that way, whereby when he took upon the sins of men, when he was put on the cross, he was put in the midst of thieves. He was put in the midst of thieves, meaning where he did not belong. Yes. Even though he took the sins of men, 
Those who killed him didn't kill him because of the sin of men. They killed him because they did not like him. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Those who murdered Jesus, they murdered him because they didn't like him. They took an innocent man and lied on him. He's using witchcraft. He's doing this. He's a devil worshiper. He's the... All those names they were calling him, they were calling him because he took our sins on himself. So they were insulting him and lying on him, but they did not identify who those people really were. So when they killed him, the spiritual world broke. Because it was not created to be unjust. So when Jesus died and gave up his spirit, he descended into hell to make sure it falls. And because hell operated unjustly, it had to give up its power. So he took the keys. Come on. Amen. Amen. So good. So good. This system is broken. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Yes. How could you bring an unjust person in here? Yeah. And look at what he did. Because the system was broken, he broke it. Yeah. Using wisdom. He went and preached to those who are arrested. And said, this system has been corrupt. It was not meant for you to be in here. Because when Jesus died, he did not just die for the present man. He died for the past man and the future man. Amen. So when he descended into hell, the Bible says he preached to the souls that were in hell. And let the captives out. Listen. I always laugh. I'm sorry to tell you this. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Jesus was on earth about 2,000 years ago. Actually, a little over 2,000 years ago. Okay? A little over 2,000 years ago. Now, from the time of Adam to Jesus, it's a few thousand years uh, can you hear me? It's a few thousand years. Now Jesus goes into hell and preaches to the soul from the time of Noah to his present time and takes all of them out of hell. Now this is in your Bible. Musa, bring it up for me. Bring it up for me. It's good for you to know these things because you see, the church has made hell. Listen, hell is a bad place. You shouldn't go there. But we have given it more credit than it actually deserves. And we have given it way too much power than actually it has. People want to give their life because they are afraid of this hell. Yet God is saying, don't fear the devil. Don't fear hell. Fear me. I am worse than those things. Yes. Watch this by the Spirit of God. But from the time of Jesus to our time, it's only been 2,000 years and some change. Now, is it true that there's a lot of souls that have gone to hell? Yes. One soul lost is too many. But if you look at the grand scheme of picture, of the picture, hmm, of things, you realize there are fewer people in hell compared to heaven. But the church wants you to believe there are more people in hell than there are in heaven. That is absolutely not true. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he may bring up us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Can we keep going? By which also he went and preached and to the spirits in prison. If you go to a prisoner and ask them, do you want to be free? Yet you're on death row. What are they going to say? Yes. 
uh, let's be real. You know the death row. You have already seen punishment. And somebody comes and says, by the way, I am the way to life. Do you want to get out of here? Who is going to say no? (laughs) By which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Not spirits, spirits in prison. Verse 20. Which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was preparing. Where in few that is eight souls were saved by water. Notice God hated that only eight people were saved. Boy. He did not want those people who died in the flood to die and be in hell. So when Jesus was coming, he had them in mind. Come on. Boy, so good. He did not only have the future in mind. He was thinking about those who are disobedient from the day of Noah. Why don't they preach this? Because they know they can enslave you by preaching sin to you. They will enslave you by telling you that you need to fear hell. So you will stay in their church. It's manipulation. It is the truth. I'm being honest with you. This doesn't mean go and sin. But Jesus has paid the price. Amen. Amen. That is the truth. We are not afraid of death. We are not afraid of hell. We are not afraid of it because we are filled with the love of God. We have known the Lord Jesus. We have known the way to salvation. And we know it takes God to keep us on that path, not our strength. Look at verse 21. The like figure where unto even baptism that also now save us not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice, God wants to fix this conscience. Today, you are breaking out of the grave. Amen. Amen. I want you to rise up. We are going to pray. Those who are getting baptized and those who have been baptized before, this is your prayer. This is a prayer for you. That the Lord will show you mercy and grace by hearing this word that the grave should not hold you. That the grave should no longer hold you. You are anointed to break the grave. Amen. Amen. That grave that held your mother, she never fulfilled her dream. That grave that held your father, that grave that is holding your children, that's that grave that is holding your career, that d- grave that is holding your destiny, I'm here to tell you that it's about to break. Amen. See. Ah, you need to clap like you mean it. You are about to break out. Amen. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I am anointed for trouble. I am anointed for trouble. Because the anointing targets yokes. Because the anointing targets yokes. Some of the yokes I've been fighting with. Some of the yokes I've been fighting with. Are yokes that took my fathers and my mothers. Are yokes that took my fathers and my mothers. It took those who are before me. It took those who are before me. Father, you are interested not only in delivering me. Father, you are interested not only in delivering me. But also delivering those who the grave is holding. But also delivering those who the grave is holding. That are connected to me. That are connected to me. So Father, I pray in the name of your son Jesus. So Father, I pray in the name of your son Jesus. Because I am anointed for the grave. Because I am anointed for the grave. The grave will not have power to hold me. The grave will not have power to hold me. And if it cannot hold me, it will not hold my family. If it cannot hold me, it will will not hold my family. It will not hold my children. It will not hold my children. It will not hold my seed. It will 
will not hold my seat. It will never hold anyone that I represent. It will never hold anyone that I represent. Father, I have the grace and the power. Father, I have the grace and the power to shift the destinies of my family. To shift the destinies of my family. Therefore, I pray, my Lord and my God. Therefore, I pray, my Lord and my God. Let every grave in my family let every grave in my family let every tomb in my family let every tomb in my family let every casket in my family let every casket in my family let it break in the name of Jesus break in the name of Jesus and let those who are bound by death and let those who are bound by death those who are bound by the grave those who are bound by the grave may they break free may they break free lift your voice and begin to pray Let's go. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Look at me, Mama. Who did you come with, Mama? Wait, where did you come from, Mama? Belize. Yeah? Belize. You, you came from Belize to this place? Amen. Okay. Amen. Name of Jesus. Be free. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woman of God, God has straightened your life. Amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, help my dear mother. <sighs> Let restoration come on her body in the name of Jesus. Let every ligament and every bone and every vessel and nerve be restored in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hear me, children of God. Hi, Mama. Are you, are you well? Hear me by the Spirit of God. Tonight is a night that the spiritual realm is open for you. Amen. 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 There are days that are significant spiritually. This is one of those days. Amen. Without this day, there is no salvation. Amen. This is where the fulfillment of our liberation from the chains of death began. It was not just on crucifixion day. This all was to fulfill the pattern of prophecy that God has set. So you are in a prophetic moment right now. Yes. Whereby 
God has already translated you to the other side. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But you cannot receive what you don't know that has been given to you. Don't think for a moment going into, I love what a bishop says. He says, don't go into the water a dry sinner and come out a wet sinner. Amen. Did he put that in the class of baptism? I've heard him say those lines for years. You may go into the water as a dry sinner and you come out a wet sinner. A wet sinner is more messy. <laughs> Benz, why are you laughing like that? Bishop, check if she's a wet sinner. <laughs> but hear me by the Spirit of God. The water does not change you. The change is within. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again. The change is where? Amen. Within. The change begins within. As you lift your hands to him, Lift your hands to him. You are going to look to him and say, Father, today I receive the keys that you took from hell, death, and the grave and you gave. Father, I take possession of them. And today I lose every captive in my family, beginning with myself. I want you to raise your voice and I want you to pray this and then we'll proceed into the next thing that God wants us to do. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Let's go. 
Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Understand this. Whether you're watching from home or you're watching here. Those who are being baptized and those who are not being baptized. Understand this thing. You will no longer be held by the grave. Amen. 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 The louder the amen, the greater the word. Miracle. Amen. Whether you are in the overflow or the main century. The louder the amen, the greater the word. I want you to understand the night always seems dark and difficult but you have to remember everything was born out of darkness whenever God is working on something nobody can see it when the seed is in the ground nobody can see it it is only the one who put it in there that has the knowledge of what is happening. Amen. The dawn is coming and what God is doing with you will be public. Amen. See, he is working in the dark, but what is about to show up? Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody shall fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. So understand that it has been fulfilled. Amen. Those who are getting baptized, I want you to remain praying. The Bible says that when Jesus was about to be baptized, there were many people, but he was the only one that was praying. The Bible says that he was continually praying until he was immersed in the water. He was the only one in the attitude of prayer. Not saying the other people's baptism didn't count, but it's only his baptism that provoked the heavens to be open. Be prayerful continually as we prepare to immerse you in water and those who are sitting, pray for them, intercede for them. This is what you need to do. Don't go home. Sit and pray for them. Congratulate them for the next chapter of their life. Amen. Amen. I wish I was the one being baptized by me. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. I really do. I really do. You have to understand, being baptized is very important, but you have to remember, every spiritual act also matters who is taking you through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I wish I was you. I really do. But the Lord is faithful. I said the Lord is faithful. Amen. So let's start arranging people. Worship team, come let's worship for a little bit while we prepare the other people. Ready?
Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Are you ready? Yes. Father, we thank you for this hour. And we pray that this water is sanctified to carry out the great mandate that, Lord Jesus, you gave unto your apostles. As your servants, Lord, you have commissioned us to baptize your people. So, Father, we pray as your children are immersed into the water. Let your intention for their spiritual life be accomplished. Father, I thank you that your will is about to be done now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That Lord, as we baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead has been invoked. 
Father, we thank you that it is so in the name of Jesus. Those who are sitting, encourage those who are coming in. As we pray for them, there are some that they have been afflicted with spirits that will be free. Amen. There are some that will be cleansed from incurable diseases, skin diseases. But all will transition into the life the Lord has called them to. Heaven will be guaranteed for them. In Jesus' name, let's begin to bring them in. Let's keep worshiping God as they come in. Yes. 
ministry, guys. Come on. You have rescued my
I'll sing your praise. I'll sing your praise. Come on. Oh. Just to see my sin.
find favor in your sight. Lord, please say, hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. And I'll cross the hardest desert.
to be overcome. When many are coming into this water, I need you to understand that the powers of darkness will be broken. You, I command you, depart from her. <laughs> Never enter her again. Thank you, Father, for complete liberation. Thank you for a new beginning that the old life has died. The room for demons is dead. And a completely new start has been given to your child. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Young woman. Lift her up. Lift her up. There's one more remaining in there. I command you. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. You will not die. You will live. I break your chains off her. Break! In the name of Jesus. Break! 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 In Jesus' name. The power of witchcraft and death. The power of witchcraft and death. Today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be consumed. Be consumed. Be consumed. Be consumed. All of you that have entered her spirit of sorcery and witchcraft, in the mighty name of Jesus, break! Every one of you, I strip you of your power by reason of the blood of Jesus. By reason of the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. She is free. Take Congratulations. Congratulations. This is why you who are sitting need to be interceding. I know for you it just looks like people are just being put in water. No, there's battles going on here. Some are visible, some are invisible. The issue is me, I'm a scanner. You can't pass me with a demon. Demons cannot walk on easy street. For demons, it is hard street. For those who belong to Jesus, it is what? Demons don't survive this atmosphere. Let's keep worshipping the Lord. Let's keep worshipping the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here And come flood this place and fill the atmosphere In your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Say, Holy Your glory, your glory is what our hearts are for, and to be overcome by your presence. Let's sing that again. Let's sing that again. And I say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And come flow. It's what our hearts long for, and to be overcome by your presence, Lord. And I will build my life upon your word. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my 
trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your word it is a firm foundation I will put my trust
Thank you, Father. 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 The Lord said your name is Hannah. She comes from a Muslim family and God gave her a name. Clap to Jesus. And clap for Jesus. Worship music, you are giving up on us. Ah. If the prophet is laboring, where are you? Please, please turn around, sit. Let's worship, please. We have already baptized over 150. Hallelujah. We've passed the halfway mark. I think we're under 100 now, right? Less than 100 now, okay. Still high, but less than 100.
Hey, hey, you, you. Look here. Look here. Stand still. Stand still. I command you. Leave her. <laughs> leave her. And never return. In Jesus' name. You will leave her. You will not touch her. You will no longer walk with her. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Move her to the side. It's finished. Let's continue, please.
Say all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place hear up with praise. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Hey, can you hear it? Can you feel it?
Yes, I'll stay right here. You can build your home on my words. And I'll stay right here where I'm welcome. You can build your home on my words. And I'll stay and I'll stay right here. You can build your home on my words. That's all you say. And I'll stay right here where I'm welcome. You can build your home on my words. And I'll stay right here where you're welcome. Oh, you can build your home. You can build your home. You can build your home. You can build
I wanna see you, see you. I wanna see you. Hey, see you. I wanna see you. Say see you, see you. I wanna see you. Say I wanna see you. I wanna see you. I wanna see you. Worship. 
hands to the king father we thank you for an awesome move and we thank you for the expansion of your kingdom glorify yourself now and eternally continue to show us your goodness father reveal yourself even more unto us today cause us to know you better than we knew you before father we thank you for the strength to serve you we thank you for the strength to chase after you. 
Father, may your name be adored now and forever. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Be exalted now, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Clap your hands to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. To all those who are baptized, congratulations. So, I will see you early in the morning for, for our prayers. And remember, can you give me your thing, the, your flyer? Come, come, Bishop Van, come, come quickly. It's tomorrow, so I want you to talk about it a little bit fast. Thank you, Papa. Uh, tomorrow we're having Manage My Wealth, and uh, this is all about unlocking the vault. Uh, in this session, we're going to teach you how to receive what is yours, manage and multiply, and successfully transfer it. Because if we don't transfer it, we're, we're not successful. So Papa's going to unlock teach us and show us exactly how to receive what is actually yours because there's an inheritance that is yours but if you don't know what is yours then you can't receive it so it's called manage my wealth because you already have the wealth we're just going to show you where it is Amen. so <laughs> in this place tomorrow it starts at one o'clock you can register online and in person so uh, there's no excuses to from 1 to 6 o'clock. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the king. Let's finish. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the blessing and the strength to serve you. Father, as we finish the night tonight, we thank you that it is a new beginning. When we are done, you begin to work. Father, your work with us is not done. It's barely beginning. Glorify yourself now in the name of your son Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uncle Fred, I miss you. Kathy, I miss you guys. I miss you guys. I need to see you guys soon. Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Here you go, Apostle. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And if you've not had the opportunity to give a seed and you want to do it, you still have the opportunity to do it as we leave. Hallelujah. And if you want to do that, look to the directions of the ushers. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, for those who uh, couldn't register, I think they were having issues registering. You can actually show up tomorrow, and um, there'll be a specific, specific line just for persons who didn't get the chance to register. So no one will be denied. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Say bless, say bless, say bless, say bless. And we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated. We Everybody say bless, 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 say bless, 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 we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every strong old sin. Say, Father, they must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed.
generational truths that will leave a legacy for your family. When you feel like you don't have anything, when you feel like I might as well end it, that's when he really showed up. You are Christian, but you're afraid to buy a jet because people will say something. You're not spiritual. Anyone that is experienced or that wants to be wealthy, they know that life is always evolving. The Bible says money answers all things. Let's get this knowledge so we can have that money that will answer all things. I looked at a building and said, that could be my building. Before I got to a corner, a prophet calls me and says, God said, go back and anoint that place you saw as yours. I've ha I still own that building. To be poor is a mindset. The evidence that you have really fulfilled all spiritual righteousness, you are supposed to be rich. 